entered the realm of dead air. For the next two hours, you will be transported into the world of the strange and the supernatural. You might not feel the need to cleanse your laptops or mobile devices afterwards. But it might not be a bad idea. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Dead Air Live. It is our Sunday night show right here on Dead Air Full Spectrum. We are simulcast with KGRADB.com, KGRA on Facebook. My name is George Lopez, and pinch hitting tonight, uh, also from the state of Florida, the very lovely Aaron Bush. Uh, Ken DaCosta has come down with a nasty bout of Rhode Island. Bad. <laughs> it, yeah. It, it's it's 195 is a mess yeah bad uh, yeah. so uh <laughs> thoughts and prayers for ken's recovery yeah you know again it's 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 not too different aaron from what we're dealing with here in florida it's cold and it's warm it's cold for them it's cold and it's freezing then it's cold and it's freezing right. but, but they right. uh they're trying to adjust to it and and everybody up there is feeling the effects of this up and down kind of weather and so uh I bet you're glad you're not up at the Conjuring House right now. I would actually love to be up there right now with the snow because they got six inches today. You're insane. <laughs> but driving from here to there right now, probably not very smart. Floridians on no. snow in New England probably don't mix super great. So um, we'll go back when the uh, when the snow wears out. <laughs> Two words, black ice. That'll keep me down here yes. for forever. Don't yep, even that's no that. joke. Mm -mm. Um, we are simulcast, uh, as I said, on KGRA, uh, KGRADB.com, KGRADB.com. I'm looking at my notes, unfortunately, and trying to get crossed on it. KGRA on Facebook. Uh, if you can, guys, please hit that subscribe button. Also, the thumbs up for our content, and most importantly, the reminder bell uh, for all the wonderful shows that we have coming forward during the year of 2024. Some exciting guests coming up in the next couple of weeks also. So thank you, guys. I see everybody already joining us in chat. Always appreciate it. And uh, I'm looking forward to tonight. Now, a lot of you might have looked at the thumbnail and said, George, it's not October. Why are we doing a show on witches? This is not a costume scenario that we're talking about tonight this is a lifestyle uh for these people there's a lifestyle for many many people we're going to be talking about uh just how big that group is and growing and uh you know it's a lot safer where they're at in los angeles than in salem so i heard but um i'm excited about tonight too as well and aaron yeah. this is this is your wheelhouse so my wheelhouse so when ken reached out to me today to um, help out tonight. I was so excited because I had designed the thumbnail. Um, and obviously I followed Secrets of the Craft when that aired. Um, and that was the thing that got me to go out and start really kind of diving into witchcraft. So I'm pretty excited about it. And I know both of these wonderful ladies are energy healers as well. So I'm excited to dive into some of that end of things too. Um, it's a rare chance where you can get several energy healers together on a podcast um, to discuss. So that's pretty cool. Well, I, I'm going to say by the end of tonight's show, Aaron, you have to have some sort of a title nomenclature because our two guests joining us right now are the American Witch and the Rock and Roll Witch. So, Aaron, think about one that you want to have at the end of the show. And Paranormal Witch just <laughs> woke up. You do that. But we are so happy to have us join. One of our family members, everybody knows her, Secrets of the Craft host. Uh, and our, a very, very lovely correspondent from Los Angeles, Melissa St. Hilaire. And the guest she's bringing with her, one of the guests from Secrets of the Craft that we're so happy to have with us tonight also. Pleasant joining us. And should I say your last name? I was wondering if I can. You can try it. <laughs> uh, I was going to say Gaming. Take a shot. Pleasant yeah, you got Gaming. It. You got All it. All right. 
Nice. Welcome, well, lady. Thank you so much. Boy, am I outnumbered tonight. <laughs> Jesus, can I hate you? I know you're watching. I hate you. <laughs> I'm going to lose this argument. <laughs> yeah. So Already, how, this, yeah. how are you doing? How's it, how, how are you guys on the West Coast? Doing pretty good. Melissa and I were just, uh, before we got on the air, we were talking about um, all the, the crazy weather we've been having. We're just like you guys, except extreme for LA, but not extreme for the East Coast. But also um, all of our electrical weird escapades. And there's been so much rain in LA this season that there's shit growing in my yard. Yeah. That I've never even seen it. It looks like from Jurassic Park. And, um, and because of that, I spend almost every day sounding like a mafia don on the Sopranos. <laughs> like, like, oh, hey, what are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about like, oh no, are we gonna have to blow our nose while we're like here? <laughs> Oh, look. Allergy, like East Coast allergies. Yeah. <laughs> Saline. No. The struggle is real. The reality yeah. struggle is real. It's like, how do you have, how do you have allergies in January? I'm it's sorry. Warm. It's still warm. It's like, how do you have allergies yeah. in January? It's still 80 degrees here. <laughs> what are you going to do? We've been getting a lot of wind, though. And with the wind comes all kinds of strangeness. You know what I mean? Electricity yeah. goes out. Internet goes out. So I'm like crossing my fingers because it's been it's been kind of spotty. But right now it seems OK. So I would call it, it, they call it um, the Santa Ana winds, which we've been getting those mm -hmm. in regular winds. But Santa Ana winds are called the devil winds or the witch winds out here. What, what the heck happened? Was it flooding in San Diego that I saw? Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. It's been uh, all sorts of stuff like that's been happening all over the place. You said, like, we just need an ark and some unicorns or something. Is, is, <laughs> is this is this the results of an evil witch? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We would have all, all Salem to ass by now. <laughs> Seriously, it's probably just Mother Earth being like, all right, enough with you people. Yes. <laughs> yes. We had Does, like, I've had enough. I've unleashed it's the hounds. Does the yeah, craft, exactly. the, does any field of the craft deal with weather? Oh, yeah. Yes. Really? Um, there's, lot, there's lots of weather stuff, too, but I can tell you guys a hilarious story about um, a guy I did a reading for once. Um, we, were, we were in the middle of the reading, and he was acting like he knew what all the tarot cards were, even though, like, he didn't, he didn't know any of it. And I think he was a studio executive because he had that sort of, like, you know, fake tan that was obvious and you know he was all all like Great really well dressed and stuff yeah. and so then um he looked at me at one point and said well i'm really spiritual too you know and i said i'm sure you are you know otherwise you wouldn't be getting a tarot reading and then he said yeah i mean you you want to know what i do and so in my head i was thinking he's going to either say like ceremonial magic or wicca or something like that and i said sure and he said he leaned forward and he took off his glasses like like Eric Estrada about to give someone a ticket and chips, right. you know? And then he said, I control the clouds on Oahu. And then he sat back and folded his arms. And so in my head, I'm like, use your acting skills, use your acting skills. And I was like, oh. Do you only do Oahu or do you do other islands as well? And I mean, without laughing, I didn't say it. And he looked at me and said, only Oahu. <laughs> like, that's oddly specific, but okay. <laughs> so strange. Right? <laughs> I'm sure you've had nuts in your readings before. Oh, totally. But you know, <laughs> But seriously, though, that I really do believe, though, that spirits can and can affect the weather. You know, like mm -hmm. I've, I've had experiences where I've stepped outside and I've asked a friend to, you know, let them know that let me know they're here or a pet. And I'll get like on an otherwise totally calm day, I'll get like a weird swirl of wind just around. Yeah. I was just going to yeah. say a gust of wind. I get that kind of stuff, too. But there's also there's also. Um, you know, traditionally in so many cultures, there's been like weather spells and like even even the concept of praying for rain. It's like that might as well be a spell, you know? Oh, like, okay. Right. True. It is true. Um, but I don't think you can just do it for the clouds over Oahu. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's so specific, like of all the places in the world. 
<laughs> well, I, right. I, I, well, I, why not? I guess. It was so hard not to not to just start cracking up. I was I was really impressed with myself when he left the room. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that was a poker face right there. Yeah, which is necessary. Uh, just is just I'm questioning about that because I'm pretty sure I control the weather over Ken's house. <laughs> And that's why he's been so Very sick. Possible. Aaron, because yeah. I have a prediction. I've got a, a list of questions here, as you do. So I want to make sure that we don't cross wires. And uh, I want to set you free with the ladies here for a few minutes. And Excellent. hopefully when you're done, I have one or two questions left. All right. Sounds good to me. So I'm super you. excited because I, as I mentioned before, as on cue, Bernie is making his appearance, um, <laughs> my crazy dog. Um, I started kind of looking into witchcraft. It was something I started getting pulled to. And then, of course, Ken tells me that Secrets of the Craft is coming out. So, of course, I am every week taking notes. And I went and bought a book of shadows. I've made some black salt. Now, like, I'm starting to play a little bit. So, but my biggest question is, we're all energy healers here, the three of us. A big question for me is we all have a different way of doing our energy work, right? I know for me, it's it's traditional Reiki, and then I do some channeling with the galactics. I'm curious for both of you, as healers, but you're also sensitives, you have all these other different things you do. Are there other parts of your craft and your practice that you pull into your energy work, um, either for yourself or working with other people? Yes. Do you want, do you want to go first, Melissa? Do you want me to go first? Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, for me, the biggest thing is mediumship, you know, like I, cause I, I've mediumship has been my sort of modality since I was little, even before I used that word or, or knew I was a medium. And then, um, and then I got into witchcraft and, you know, and that sort of thing. And then I was, you know, all my friends were like, well, if you're doing all this stuff, you might as well do energy healing. You probably already can. And I always kind of had like a sense because, um, injured animals would always come to me. I'm always saving birds and, and squirrels and all kinds of stuff. They just find me. So it didn't seem like that much of a leap to go from, you know, animals to people. There is a difference though, I have to say. <laughs> yes, definitely. Right. But, um, but for me, like all my friends who are also mediums were like, the thing you're going to notice is if you start doing energy healing, your mediumship is going to blast wide open. And I was like, well, it's kind of already open. Like, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then, of course, I start learning. I, I started learning Reiki, um, Usui, and then Holy Fire. And we you know it was a largely a traditional path, but we kind of, uh, I kind of mixed witchcraft into it because to me, the two just kind of went together really well. And someday when I get my act together, I'm going to create a like a series called Reiki for witches because already it's in my head I just have to like create it but um but the thing is is like with me witchcraft is also tied to mediumship because I work with spirits all the time and I think of it as like spirit craft so mm -hmm. when I started doing practice healings on people and when I started I was very by the book you know what I mean like I did everything yes. that my teacher taught me exactly as it as she did but then I noticed as I was practicing on people and I'm one of those people, like I stretched it out for a long time. I'm not like a weekend master. Like I just, to me, I didn't feel like I could learn that much in a weekend. And, and I, I felt like I had to do a right. year in between each level and really take the time to like, you know, to learn the craft and not just dive in. But like, I would be, you know, I had this one client friend slash friend <laughs> and I was like, doing the Reiki thing. And all of a sudden over his knees, I got a past life thing pop up. And I was like, what? Okay. What? I'm like, And then, you know, when you're doing traditional Reiki, you, you know, you're quiet during the whole thing, but I, you know, I'm a medium, I channel. So his he, past life or your past life it was his past life. And it just, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. And I was like, well, you know, I'm going to break the rules, but here I go. Like something's come through and I got to share it or it's gone. And so like, I, you know, I kind of was like, okay, I'm going to interrupt your Reiki for a second. And I got to share this with you. And then he was like, oh my God, I've had dreams about this. I know exactly where that place is. I think my ancestors came from there. And we had this like amazing little mediumship session, like in the middle of the Reiki. And then I was like, you know what, maybe I don't have to do like buy the book. <laughs> it morphs all the time, right? Exactly. Like it morphs. You're constantly adding things to it, I think. 
Exactly. Yeah. And I think it works better when you do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, for the individual, you know. Sure. Of course. I love that. How about you, Miss Um, I'm I'm kind of a lot like Melissa, except I didn't receive formal Reiki training. Like I said, with um with the energy healing, the first times I consciously remember doing it, but not knowing it was called energy healing, because this was in the early 60s, was um, I rescued a little squirrel that had fallen on the ground out of its nest. And then a few days later, a baby crow. And all I did was like hold them. And I thought I was wishing or praying uh -huh. to get better. And I, the squirrel recovered pretty quickly because I think he was, you know, he was a little baby, but he was sort of conscious and they can skitter around the crow. I took him into my sure. house. And even when I was eight, I, <laughs> as if this wasn't an indication of the rest of my life, I named him Nevermore. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> um, you know, appropriately reading Edgar Allan Poe when, when yep. we were like not even in second grade. Um, anyhow, so um, I wound up feeding him through a, a nose drops <laughs> dropper because they didn't, you know, like that was the only thing in the house. And I rinsed it out and I, I just fed him like, milk and bread and stuff chopped up and he started getting better and he would he would sit on my shoulder as i would walk to school and then when i got to the schoolyard he would fly onto the jungle gym and wait for me until i came out for recess Aww. and so, so this was my first relationship with energy healing and you know with something like sort of supernatural or witchy or crazy because um but I didn't harness it until much, much later. And my, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh. My spiritual awakening of that I was a healer was happened um, when that movie, The Green Mile, came out, which I think was either the late 80s or the early 90s. Um, I don't yeah. know if you guys have seen it, but for the audience, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very heavy movie about prison. And um, the main character in it, John Coffey, was actually an energy healer, but they thought that he had killed these two girls. And this is how the movie starts off. It, it takes a long time and I'm not gonna go into it, but he was in jail. And so him and this other inmate were obsessed with this little tiny mouse that would come through and they'd save like pieces of cheese from their meager prison meals or little bits of bread. And that the sadistic uh, jail warden or corrections officer started knowing that they liked and or loved this little mouse. And he was, he was such an asshole that um, he came through and the mouse was out running around, you know, and he, he like just stomped on it and you could hear a little squeak mm -hmm. and everyone in the whole theater gasped because it was just a horrifying moment and he just laughed and walked away. And so that the guy, the main character, John Coffey was trying to reach for it and it was really tense. He was like sticking, trying to stick his whole shoulder under the bars and he was, it was barely got it. And then when he got it, he held it up to his face cupped in his hands and he blew on it and this was this was like a real award-winning movie um but the uh, there was a little sparkle mark of animation there for a second and then the little crow like i mean the the little mouse woke up and so everyone in the hall theater is going oh and, and like crying but i was having <laughs> i was like oh my god oh my fucking mm -hmm. god that I know how to do that. I just, I just had, I just had goosebumps even just saying it because it was so crazy. And then my next thoughts were like, I can't tell anyone that I know how to do this because I'm like, I'm not exactly. Um, but, but so that was, you know, that that started happening. But um, like you, Melissa, I had, I've had so many experiences. The first paranormal experience or my first intuitive flash, as you would say, what happened when I was four. I was sitting, um, we lived in way in the sticks of upstate New York. And um, I was facing the forest in my little playroom. And we had property that went down to the state road. And there was a big barn on the property. And all of a sudden, a man's voice came into my head that was very stern. And it said, you have to tell your mother the barn's on fire. And so I was like three and a half or four. I, I immediately went into hysterics. I didn't know where this voice was. It was yelling at me. So I ran into the kitchen going, mommy, mommy, mommy. Like, and I was just in tears. And I was like, a man told me the barn's on fire. And my mother was 
said, what? What are you talking about? She was trying to calm me down. And I'm just screaming. A man told me this. And she's like, what man? And then I, and I was like, I don't know. And she opened the kitchen door and walked out and the barn was on fire, way down at the bottom of the hill. But luckily it had just started. So um, the volunteer fire department came because there wasn't a real one there. And I remember my um, my teenage older oh. brother, father coming in covered in, in soot, but it got put out. So I've had the clairvoyance my whole life. I mean, clairaudience my whole life. Like the next, the next episode I remembered was when, um, when I was I was like about thirteen, and we were wandering down this woodsy path after school to the place where we always got high on weed, you know. <laughs> and um, suddenly, uh, a, a, a man's voice, but a different man, came into my head and said, um, "Go home now." And at that point, I was just like, "Okay." And I turned around and I was like, "You guys, I have homework," which was a complete lie because I never did my homework. Um, if I had it, <laughs> but nobody, and then they all got busted an hour later with like letters sent home to the parents and like, you know, detention and all this kind of stuff. No one ever blamed me for being a narc, but so, so I had, I, <laughs> Melissa, I, I, I think you missed that opportunity on your show, Secrets of the Craft. So far we've learned she smoked weed and she didn't do her homework. <laughs> I know. I think I think I'll have a pleasant one for a second episode. There's a secret. <laughs> Secrets of the craft. Yeah. Um, be a bohemian. <laughs> um, no, but and it, so anyway, I mixed in so many things with my energy work, and sometimes weird entities come through. I haven't I haven't seen someone's past life like you did, but. I had okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you one other. Am I talking too much? Because I'll stop. But I've got a great story about the wild. Oh, we got we got two hours. So we got tons of time. Out. Have at it, sister. <laughs> okay, so um, when I was first um, when I was first really implementing it, this wasn't in the eighties. This was in the two thousands when I was getting ready to take on on clients and just um, figuring out how I was going to do this or you know. Like I was talking to people that did Reiki. Like I talked to this one person at a retreat and I said, I do some healing. Can we trade? Because I want to see what Reiki is like. And um, so she did Reiki on me and it felt great. And then I did it to her. And uh, then she just looked at me and she said, I don't even need to give you the symbols. You don't need them. <laughs> right. But so, so um so my neighbor had heard that um, I did energy healing and she came over one night about 1030 knocking on my door looking for Lauren and she said, my back is killing me and I know you're doing energy healing. We you work on me? And I said, sure. I didn't even have a table then. So I put her on my lumpy old 1930s couch. And um, so I started like working on her and I was pulling stuff out of her constantly. I could feel stuff and it was coming in huge like all I can say is it felt like a big log of energy and I was backing mm -hmm. up and backing up because it was palpable. And in my head, I was like, what in the hell is going on here? And she was moaning. Like if you would have been passing by my house, you would have thought someone was having wild sex. Like she's like, oh, oh. Like, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but so anyway. More secrets of the craft. <laughs> this is great. I love it. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, um, so I I'm, I was like thinking, I need to dispose of this energy, but what am I going to do? And so I kind of just thought the screen doors are open in the kitchen. I'm just going to like lightly throw it down the kitchen stairs and hope it goes outside and I'll deal with it later, right? So I'm really thinking this. Right. The second I do it, I have these shop lights in my kitchen, like big giant fluorescent shop lights. And um, they started blinking on and off with the noise that was going. <laughs> it, sounded, it sounded like an alarm at a plutonium lab or something. I'm not kidding. Or at a, a nuclear <laughs> reactor. And they were flashing on and off. And, and she bolts up off the table and like, what's happening? And I was like, I don't know. So I ran back to the kitchen. There was about two feet of white smoke with shit in it that looked like Nike check marks. That's the only way I can describe it. 
um, like sitting on the ceiling and the check marks were swirling around. And, and I, I, I was just like, I was at a loss. I'd never had anything like this. So I, I walked down the stairs and I held my arms straight up and I screamed at one of the fluorescent lights, stop it. And it stopped. And then I heard her go like that behind me. <laughs> and, then, and then I didn't want to tell her what I was seeing in Kate because I didn't want to influence what her experience might have been. And I said, hey, are you seeing any of this stuff? And she goes, oh, you mean the black smoke on the, and the white smoke on the fucking ceiling? Yeah, I'm seeing it. What's going on? <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, no shit. I mean, like, you know, like, like a few years ago, if I, if I would have said any of this in, pu uh, in public, I would have been already like institutalized. <laughs> well, you know, that, I don't know. That's another question I, when you're talking about, you know, how you're like what you're seeing when you're pulling energy out of someone. So I'm curious about this too. I know for me, like when I walk into a room, everybody's energy like looks a certain way. Yeah. Like I, I've started seeing people not physically, but in my mind's eye more as frequency. So to me, a lot of times, like someone who's got horrific anxiety or is super stressed out, they look kind of like TV static or depression or just generally not goodness can look like, like tar almost. So I'm curious yes, if my right. ladies also see energy, energy that way, or oh, you know, if it presents certain ways to you both. Yeah. I, I, oh, sorry, Melissa, you go. Oh I no, yeah, that. I was just gonna say, I, I, that's totally what happens to me, and it's weird because you know, I, I taught a class at one point on how to see auras because, mm -hmm. like, my whole life I've seen them, but I didn't realize that like not everybody could just see them all the time. <laughs> right. And, you know, and it, but it's not just color, you know, I mean, because a lot of people, when they talk about it, they talk about like, oh, what color is my aura? Oh, it's blue or it's purple or whatever. And yeah, you're going to, you know, sometimes you do get colors in there. But what I also get is like kind of like what you're describing, but also I'll get like, like things like jagged lines or. Yeah or waves or swirls, you know, lots mm -hmm. of times if someone is very confused, I'll, I'll see this like almost like a, like a tornado over their head, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean? and I'll, and I'll, and I'll also like feel it in my body. So I'm not just seeing it. Yep. And that's the other thing people talk yeah. about is they only talk about what they see. They're not talking about the yes. fact that are everything, you know, yes. so I'll, I'll hear stuff, I'll feel stuff, I'll especially feel stuff, you know, like, you know, say, you know, someone like about to cry, but they're trying to be happy. I can like, I'm like, oh gosh. Okay, honey. Like, let's go somewhere and talk. Cause you're about on the verge of tears, you know? Yeah. So it's yep. weird how it comes in like that all different ways, you know, so I, I've, I've seen, when I see, um, I see physical things on someone's body, it, like with my eyes okay. open and closed, like for me, they appear like dots. It's almost like a little target, like where where stuff is. And this is this is just from like a, a bare, like I always scan their whole uh -huh. energy field. Um, and then I'll say like, what's up with your right shoulder? Or um, tell me how you injured your lower back or something. And everyone's like, how do you know this? And I don't know. And when I when I first started doing that, that energy healing, like I was hesitant to say that, but I've been doing it for so long, you know, like I'm, I just trust it and it's always spot on. But I, I, I can also sense people from far away. And I think I've had this all mm -hmm. my life as most humans do, but it, most people don't identify it. Um, I could tell that I did not want to know someone or that, or someone yes. would come up to me and I'd be like, Ugh, like that mm -hmm. or there'd be someone from very far away, like e even a stranger on an airplane or something. And, and I mean, not even, you know, this isn't even an attraction thing. Like you want to date them, but you feel like you need to know them, you know? Yes. Yeah. All of that is, um, I think, think that it's it's in our society especially or in most modern societies um any of these gifts that are now called gifts but i think this was just regular i mean this was like you know for a long time before it started getting like tampered down by like the church or churches or society you know because none of this i mean you could say that this is paranormal or supernatural but i really do believe everybody could possibly do it, but it's the same way. Yes. Like you, you could make a, you could make a painting, but it may not look like Botticelli's kind of painting, but still you could make one, you know? Right. Um, 
Totally. So and once you start getting in touch with this, I'm saying this also for people that are just listening, you know, once if, if you're not in touch with that type of energy, once you start just trying to even do it, it'll grow exponentially. And you don't have to really concentrate on getting the energy to work or being able to see people's auras or to feel them. You just have to let yourself be open. But on the other side of that, you don't want to be an open channel 24-7 because that's when you can absorb really um, damaging energy. I'm not going to say bad, but it might be something that's not good for you at all. Or right. for you, you know, like if you're taking on the energy of others, it can exhaust you, whether it's yes. physically or metaphysically or emotionally, spiritually, you know. So you've, you've also, um, if anyone out there is like, trying to um, learn energy work or studying it, make sure one of the first things you learn is how to shield yourself. And there's several different ways to do that. That was my going to be my next question for both of you is I always like to learn the different ways people ground and protect their energy because we all do it differently. We all typically take different things from different th uh, people and things that we've learned over a period of time. But I'm always curious what each individual person does if you're comfortable discussing it, of course, because I know for some people that's a very yeah. private practice. Um, but I think it's a good thing for people like me who are still learning. And then also for people who are just starting this stuff to learn is because that I think we can all agree is the most important thing. If you're going to start tapping in up there, you got to be grounded down here first. And yes. so I'd be interested in how both of you um, do that yourselves. Yeah, um, I do. I do a lot of different things, but I like at my heart, I'm kind of like a nature witch <laughs> because I grew up in very rural Massachusetts. I had a cornfield right out of my bedroom window and I would have to run through the cornfield to my grandma's house and she would grow like she had all kinds of different trees and, um, you know, blueberries and rhubarb and strawberries and all things like that. So when I need to ground myself, I go into nature. You know, I will grab onto a tree. I'll put my feet into the earth. I will eat fresh fruit, you know, things like that seems to sort of instantly ground me. If I can't get to something like that, you know, if I have any iron around, iron seems to work really, really well for me. And I know it works for a lot of people huh. as well. Um, there is something called a lodestone, which works phenomenally well for like instant grounding. Um, but then also I'll do like, visualization techniques, you know, say I'm stuck somewhere, say I'm on a plane. <laughs> I can't really get outside. I don't have any iron on me and I need to ground. Then I go into a, like visualization techniques and I have this little thing that I do where I think of it as above, so below. So I will like send my energy down into the earth and I'll imagine roots because I picture myself like a tree mm -hmm. and I'll imagine roots growing from the bottom of my feet just deep deep into the earth and I picture the earth just like holding me there in gravity and keeping me safe and you know stable and comfortable and then because I have that tree sort of symbolism then it allows me to then grow like pull that grounding energy up through me and then I can still be open and receive but it's not like bah, you know <laughs> Right. <laughs> Anybody coming? Free for all. Right. <laughs> so that's. No, but no, no, no. I, can I just say one quick thing though? Because I just I forgot to mention this before. But pleasant when you were talking about the the raven and the you know quote the raven nevermore. I have to yeah. show you what the T-shirt. Now this is just a psychic coincidence. We didn't discuss this beforehand, but I am. Oh, uh, nice. my nice. <laughs> light just went off. Okay. But look at <laughs> this out. I've got a raven. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Talk about product placement. That was perfect. Okay. And then I'm just, as soon as I say it, because pleasant, the light goes off, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> so much energy in here. Um, <laughs> so crazy. Um, so anyway, like I have a my my techniques are very much similar to yours, Melissa. They're they're like it's, it's almost identical. It's so funny. Like when we met each other, this is just for you guys to know. When we met each other, I think we immediately liked each other, but we still keep having all these wild synchronicities all the time. And there's always electrical issues when we're together or even just on the phone or on 
<laughs> online. It's insane. All the time. To the point where, so I had set up my one main light here. And I was like, something said to me, that light is going to die while you're in the middle of it. So, so I have two lights set up side by side, just in case the first one <laughs> went off. And it freaking did. <laughs> I knew it. Of course it, it did. Happened. You know, Andrea Perrin has that problem too. You know, she'll try and get on podcasts. I'll try to set her up and you know, this is glitched and that's gone. And, or she's filming on, you know, a set somewhere and the lights are blowing. And I tell people, I'm like, just blame it on her because it happens everywhere she goes. <laughs> right. And so I know for uh pleasant, you know, I love talking about the different clairs that people are, you know, the most apparent or most useful to them yeah. in their practice. But I know for pleasant TPK is a huge thing for you. And that's not yeah. something you hear a lot about of course once you explain it people are going to go oh i know what that is but it's not yeah. something that's as common as like a clear audience or like for me clear sentience or clear cognizance tpk is like a whole different ball of wax so i'd love for you to kind of explain to people who don't know what that is because it's okay. fascinating all right so i mean i i have all the clairs too which thank you universe um but, but epk it's Okay, so one th before I start telling you entirely about it, it's a phenomenon that parapsychologists and regular, you know, academics have tried to study for years. But the thing about it is that it usually happens when the person that's creating the EPK or the electropsychokinesis, they can't just go like Carrie and throw John Travolta across an auditorium. Like this right. happens, this happens when you're in a heightened state of like upset or excitement or jubilation or when you're exhausted and overtired. So it, it therefore it can't be, it can't be reproduced in a laboratory easily, you know, like right. it's, and, and so it's very like, like so many people acknowledge that it exists and it's a real phenomena, but it hasn't been studied a lot. So um, when I, when I was first getting it, the minute something like that happened, it would it would also make me so nervous and anxious and just go into a tailspin of anxiety because I'd be like, oh my God, I blew out that streetlight on the way to like wherever I was going. And then when I'd get to where I was going, I'd like open the door and then close it. And then like a light bulb would shatter or something. I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, and it would just keep spiraling. And the more that I got nervous about it, I don't want anyone to know. Like I tried to keep it a secret. I tried to be in the closet about it. And this would be like if one of the winners of RuPaul's Drag Race went out on the street, but didn't want anyone to know that they were a drag queen, <laughs> you know, right. right. I, I thought I was being like really stealth and no one would know that I, I had this weird thing going on, but people would be like, Oh, Hey, pleasant. Nice to see you. Don't get near my computer or, you know, <laughs> or something like that. Um, but, um, so I started figuring out breathing techniques to try to ground me and, I was trying all different kinds, but the best one that I, you know, that I use constantly, even when I don't feel like EPK is going to be coming on, is just, um, I make, I make clients do this when I'm going to pull out like a big wad of energy, like when it's like, when it's a really big pull, because so mm -hmm. just going back to energy healing, the way I feel it is sometimes you're just cleaning up little cobwebs and other times there's like a, huge mass that like you know some industrial waste plant should be managing <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but so so if if anyone's got not, doesn't if they need more than like a little fluffing and and you know to feel more revitalized in energy healing then i will when i'm pulling things out of them because that's what it feels like to me i will make them i will tell them on the count of four we should all try this anyone that's listening try this and see how it makes you feel because it's really it's really good and relaxing but it you know it doesn't mess you up or make you have to go to sleep so when i count to three um on the count of four we will all inhale through our noses hold it for four counts which i will count out and then Release it forcefully through your mouth. And uh, I stopped going like a birthday candle thing because I'm old and I don't want more wrinkles. <laughs> so get used to blowing it out like, like, like a dragon. <laughs> that doesn't damage your collagen as much. <laughs> anyway, 
Okay, here we go. So More anyone secrets. that wants to what? More secrets. More secrets. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all gonna do this, He's right? taking notes for a follow-up show, ladies. Uh, <laughs> Everyone, everyone's gonna do this who wants to that's listening. Okay. So okay. We're looking at season I love two, this. Melissa. <laughs> go ahead. All right, so um at the count of four, I will count for everybody and one, two, three, and inhale, hold, two, three, and exhale. Go for the full Game of Thrones or Godzilla destroying Tokyo effect. Okay, one more time, because I usually do this three times in a row for, for people, and you'll notice. And one, two, Three, inhale, hold, two, three, and exhale. <laughs> Ooh, <Stop. last. laughs> okay, one more time. And one, two, three, inhale, hold, two, three, and exhale. <laughs> how did how does that make you guys feel that I can at least talk to or anyone anyone can comment from the audience if you felt that and it felt nice? It's so instantly grounding and centering. Yes. That's what I find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Grounding was what I was gonna say too. Kind yeah, of pulls you back into your body real fast. It does, yeah. yeah. So if you're like, you know, because sometimes, you know, we all kind of pop out of our bodies. I don't know if everybody, but I pop out of my body a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I'll be like floating up here and I'm like, wait, am I talking? What am I doing? Why am I up here? And it's like instantly I'm like, oh, okay, here I am. I'm in my body. This is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't they, what do they call that? Box breath? Four, 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 four. Is it box breath or something like that? I, ne I never Maybe. called it box breath. Um, okay. Oh, someone said that Liz said they saw blue after we did that. That's good. Blue's a healing color. Mm -hmm. And American Rev Warriors said it felt good. I know it's really good. I didn't. I didn't invent that breathing at, at all. I don't know where it even came from. But um, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of practices that use breath work. Yeah, there's prana. There's prana breathing, which is like mm -hmm. I forget what those numbers like two six something. I'm not, I forget the actual numbers. And then there's yeah. the breath, which is four 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 times. I yeah. usually I use something very similar every time I do my classes. Because I'll notice that when people come into the class and they're, you know, they've got the day on them. Maybe they had to drive there and traffic was bad or like they, you know, they got problems with their kids or some or whomever. You know what I mean? Right. So whenever it comes into my classes, I do a, a breath thing like that with this like and this is another secret. I never tell them that I'm doing this really, but <laughs> for this reason, but it's because I can feel all of their sort of chaotic energy. So I'm like, okay, if I can get everybody breathing the same, then everyone's going to ah, calm yes. in their body, be centered and be like ready for the lesson. <laughs> yeah, that's so smart. It just it helps you get into that well. headspace much faster. Okay. You know? I used to do that. I do this all the time when I teach dance as well for the same reasons. And they just think it's like healthy. They don't know that it's energy work. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, now they do no. And it's scientific too, because like if you talk to doctors and so you know medical people who are okay with the woo, <laughs> yeah, they'll okay tell you with the woo. Yep. Like para, para, parasympathetic nerve or something yeah. like that. I was just gonna say that there, there's a, there's a, here's another one that I use constantly, and I didn't even understand for years. Again, just because of no internet, I didn't know that this was an actual thing. Um, I would. I would hum and I would hum low. And if you, if you hum in a, in a very low tone, like, like so that like your palate at the top of your mouth is vibrating, it literally activates, um, it, it goes into your vagus nerve and act, activates the parasympathetic nervous system and just calms you down. And I remember like when I, when I was first started driving in Los Angeles, like just going on the freeway is like taking your life in your hands, the way that people drive like, like lunatics. So I was, I was always humming when I was driving and I didn't realize that that was an unconscious, like 
like grounding thing that I was doing for years. And then another time when I already knew what it, when I already knew what that was, but I was sort of just out of my mind because I was, I was on the freeway and I was late. I realized I was coming, but then <laughs> I was also holding, <laughs> I was holding a big piece of burning Palo Santo in my hand. Like it was a cigarette and I was Tony Montana. <laughs> like it was a cigar. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> That's great. I love it. Yeah, I should always keep Palo Santo in the car. Well, that breath thing too. Um, if you have ever listened, if you ever heard of the Monroe Institute or yeah. um, any of their, you know, various meditations, the Hemi Sync meditation, which has it's like it's that that oceany static sound where it's like shh, yeah. and mm -hmm. it kind of like balances out your brain. They have you do a vibratory like hum intonation kind of a sound and it's so interesting how there's all so many different like methods and modalities all using the same basic stuff for the same reasons it's amazing to me you know yeah, it's unbelievable. and then there's also like you know for, as far as humming goes um i see little kids humming all the time like either when they're playing with they're like playing with play-doh or doing something and um or like, you know, in a restaurant, wait, someone's saying, oh, you need to practice this technique. Yeah. Um, so um, like little kids have so many amazingly good natural instincts. If you, if you have the pleasure of being around kids, or sometimes if you're a parent, like the, the freneticness of being around kids, just watch your kids and see what they do for self-soothing. They don't know that it's mm -hmm. called grounding or, or anything, but that they, they all that stuff hasn't been like negated from them yet. They're just, they're born right. perfectly knowing all these skills. You know? I, I have an anecdote and I wanted your opinion on this to see whether or not it coincides with what you're talking about. But for several years, uh, while I was still able to be out in the field, so this is going back about four or five years ago, we were doing a practice of collective, collective consciousness. Yeah. And what I would do is I would lead a group uh, and, and even would do it online. So to tell you that it's from the inside of that person, not through what I was saying or any energy that I was projecting because I did it in a person and I did it over the computer. But I would have them all collectively together. The same thing. Close your eyes, deep breath in. And as they're doing a the deep breath in and breath out exercise, I'd also be giving them visuals collectively of what was going on in the room. And an interesting part of that story is almost every single time I did this, minimally 85% of them, when I said, now I want you to point in the direction that the energy is coming into the room, the spirit energy is coming into the room, uh, the energy that I called water was filling up the room, pointing it, and they would all point in the same direction. Yeah. Co connected. Mm -hmm. So, in the yep. aspect of what you're talking about, can that energy be entwined with other people? Yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so oh, bottom entanglement. Higher That's vibration, like, medium vibration, and it helps each other? Oh, yeah, totally. well, some, sometimes, sometimes, I mean, a lot it helps each other. But, like, let's just use this as, as an example. You know when you walk into a restaurant and then everything is great, and then suddenly there's over in the corner, there's a couple that start arguing and then you see it pollute the entire restaurant, even if they're not like yelling, like just the mm -hmm. whole restaurant, all the people in it, the staff get like, uh, you know, and people are just suddenly like not in, the, in a table across the room isn't laughing anymore. You know, it's just, that's an yep. energy thing completely. Yep. Exactly. And I and I have this thing where I didn't used to see this, but this is something newer that has it's it's been a few years now, but I still call it new. <laughs> but there's this thing that I've been seeing now, um, especially during readings when I'm focused. But I, I've noticed like I can see chords between people. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like and it's like everywhere you go, we're basically like everything is this entangled mesh of strings. So like the four of us talking now, we're all corded together and we're all synced because we're talking about similar things. Everyone who's yeah. listening is also corded into us right now. 
And, mm -hmm. you know, and then people in the future who watch this will be corded in as well. And it's so interesting how that, and then like with the restaurant thing, that's the exact same thing. It's like those two people, their cords are all tangled and messed up and they're fighting. And then it like ricochets. It's like a, a rippling effect of like a yeah, like a lasso. Yeah, yeah, and it comes yeah, around and it, right. it zaps everybody else. And then their energies get crazy. <laughs> yeah. Then how, 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 do, uh, I, what's the word I want to look for here? How invasive and how detrimental is that person in a chat room that comes out negative? Everything is flowing, and that one person comes in, the troll or whatever, and they come out negative. How impactful is that to that flow? Is it a dead stop? Is it a recovery point, or is it just a slight diminish? I feel like it depends entirely on a lot of different factors. You know, if the people who are running the space, especially if you have someone who's just sort of minding the energy, you know, and, and in certain traditions, they call that men in black, but I like to say person in black because, you know, <laughs> yes, yes, of course, in certain Being traditions, in black. Right. They'll have somebody who is sort of just like sitting back and like and we do this in seances a lot and, and group of ritual things. But you'll have someone just sort of minding all of the energy. And so if you have someone who can do that, they can they can kind of like sniff it out really quickly and mm -hmm. like shut that down so that you don't even have to recover because they have they have taken it out so quickly that everyone stays in that positive collective energy. But if yep. you don't have someone minding that then things can kind of go off kilter. <laughs> no, well, yeah. I call that, I call that AOL chat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, also I think that even generational trauma could be like, that's, that's an energetic thing. I believe, you know, it's because even if you, even if you or whoever we are talking about, um, didn't have particularly a, a negative childhood experiences, like their ancestors could have, and it's just sort of now stuck in their DNA, which is, it's a wild concept, but I've seen that, I've seen that in action, you know, like you will say like, wow, this person lives in a beautiful house. It looks like they've got either great like parents or siblings or a spouse, you know, and then like, what, why are they so unhappy? I mean, that's, that, yeah. that's, that's oh, totally. what that makes total sense. And it's like, and it's funny because I have um I have an ancestor going back to the 1600s who was hanged by Cotton Mather because he had abilities and I feel like my whole life has been me trying to make peace with this this generate that trauma and like and be okay and be able to do stuff like this and be open with like all the weird stuff I experience, you know. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. Like, you know, you know yep. what else, Melissa? Like, I don't know about you, but like, um, I don't know any, you know, anything about a lot of my ancestors because one side was Eastern European and the other side was Pennsylvania Dutch, you know, and there was all all sorts of different magic being practiced in both of those groups. But um, I, 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 ever since I was little, I cannot wear a turtleneck. I can't wear a turtleneck. I can't have anything around my neck. And I, I, I used to joke, yeah, like when I was younger, I would say like, I must've been hung in a previous life. But at some point I was like, I was definitely hung in a previous life. Like I couldn't, when chokers were in fashion, I couldn't wear that because I really felt like I was choking and not even if they were tight, you know, I can't have anything like rubbing on my neck or touching my neck. It's wild. Okay. I got chills when I you can't either. <laughs> I, I can't do scarves, turtlenecks. Like yeah, yeah. I don't like hoodies. I cut the. Yeah, neck. Yeah. I mean, I, everything I have, I cut the necks out of it. And Me then, too. Then that whole past life thing, right? Yeah. How many times were we hanged, burned, or drowned as witches? Right? I mean, yeah. the necks are still My generational. God. It's incredible. <laughs> it's, it's yep. Nuts. That's nuts. We, we are the damaged ancestors of the witch you didn't burn. <laughs> we we might get to have a little bit more fun. Yeah. yeah. Melissa, you got to change your website to Melissa St. Hilaire, American Witch 23 and Me. Right? <laughs> All the ancestry. Uh, we got about uh, two minutes before we go to break. Aaron, do you have a question that only requires a quick answer from our guests? I mean, that's kind of a relative 
Um, what you doing tonight? No. <laughs> What's your, what is a good suggestion for a baby witch of a spell that you think is very important? That's quick. Maybe that's probably, George is like, damn it, Aaron. That wasn't exactly the short question I was asking <laughs> yeah, for. That's a big question, but, I'm, but here we go. We have like, to extend our show. Thanks to Aaron Bush. <laughs> Aaron's been like, fired. Really by your door for protection. I just say plan, plan, plan. If you're going to do, you know, don't just dive into a spell. Know what you're doing. Do the okay. research. Get everything that you need. You know, really think about it, and also really think about what you're asking for. Do you? Oh, yeah. Let, let's know? let's talk about that after the break because that's a huge point Attention. that everyone needs to know. Yes. All right. Yep. Uh, then I'll, I'll throw one at you guys. Uh, you can each give me a you know more than just a percentage answer, but percentage wise, or even numbers, how many witches? in california oh my god why don't we the census <laughs> but you have a network everyone i know is a witch so 50 percent I mean. of everybody in california is a witch All right <laughs> it, it, just just in your area of the, uh, of the state. all of them hundreds yeah. all of them they all no, live in la i mean i was just thinking like around the green man with melissa and i like worked through the same uh, occult square the green man but there's there's over hundreds there that are just people that come for rituals and just come in for shopping as regulars and i mean they're Everyone you know out here pretty much is a witch or is saying or, you know, or not saying they are, but or someone who isn't will say they are just to be cool. <laughs> it plus, you know, to survive a place like Los Angeles, you need to have a little magic. It's true. <laughs> I mean, magic I can only imagine. And real magic. That's why I keep bringing all you guys, Jay Blumke and everyone over from L.A., because I'm hoping sometime soon I'll get some kind of a cast spot in a movie because you guys know people over on that West Coast. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet, but I'm a patient man. No worry about that. <laughs> we have got to go to break right now, guys. When we come on the other side of this break, it's only three minutes, so don't be impatient. Uh, we'll continue our interview, our very special guest tonight, Melissa St. Hilaire and Pleasant Gaiman. And Erin Bush will continue her question and answer period with them. Don't go away, guys. You're watching Dinner Live on the Dinner Full Spectrum channel. We'll see you in just a bit. Hey members, the new KGRA DB app is now available on iOS and Android devices. Gain on-demand access to any KGRA DB programming. Download any show directly to your mobile device to listen or watch on the go. Go to the App Store and search KGRA DB. Did you know 75% of Americans are... You're listening to the KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network. We provide unparalleled coverage of trending news in the world of ufology, cryptozoology, and paranormal phenomenon. Whether you're watching our video live stream or listening to one of our audio programs, you are getting the best from world-renowned researchers and hosts guiding you through topics the mainstream won't touch. Miss one of your favorite programs? No problem. Head over to the members area at KGRADB.com for access to our massive library of award-winning content. Make contact, stay connected, only at KGRADB.com. Hey guys, welcome back to the second hour of our show. Our very special guest tonight, uh, host of Secrets of the Crap, Melissa St. Hilaire, can be seen right here on Dead or Full Spectrum. And, uh, you know, we're still trying to convince her to go to uh, season two. 
but it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work um, at the editing. We talked about the editing. We joked about the editing, how much it is. But I can tell you this. I watch your episodes on my big screen TV on YouTube, and it's a production. You find on Netflix or on uh, Amazon Prime, just really well done. Uh, the camera, I don't know which one you're using, but it is, is it 4K? It's a yeah, it's a Sony. It's a special. Uh, I forget the exact brand, but it's specially designed for vlogging. <laughs> and it had, it had a decent price tag on it, so I was like, "All right, I'll get these." <laughs> and uh, also, I Pleasant Gaiman has joined us tonight, also. And uh, she, actually, she just stepped away from her screen. Yeah, now she's back. There she is. And um, uh, I'm sorry, Aaron. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I was just my brain swirled. I interrupted you, so <laughs> I just. Uh -oh. Figured since ADHD, not diagnosed, but pretty sure I fall under every single, yeah, squirrel. Yeah, something shiny. <laughs> but I was curious with Melissa doing all the productions she did for the show and all the interviewing and all of that. If you had a secret to share with people, have you thought about what that would look like for you? Oh, if I were like going to share. Yeah, if you were going to share one. <laughs> oh, no. You I don't have to can't. answer now. Did you, did you, you smoke? I'll just message you be like, hey, I need another right. one. Give me a hint. Did you smoke weed? Did you do your homework? Things like that. You know? I was a nerd. I was a total nerd. I got almost straight A's all through school. I was plucked out and put into gifted and talented. Like I was a numero uno nerd all through school. And I'm sure most people would never in a million years think that I would end up doing this. But that was because it was like my little secret, you know what I mean? Like I had mm -hmm. like I would go and follow my mom to psychic shops in Provincetown, Mass. And, um, you know, and look at all of the tarot decks and jewelry and pendulums and things. And I would be so like intrigued by all of that. But I kept it very quiet, you know, and, and the way that I was raised, it was sort of not by my family, but by like school. <laughs> You know, sure. it was very much like, you know, focus on, you know, the mundane, the real world and, you know, go and, you know, go to a good college and get a good job and work in a cubicle until you die. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was on that path, you know, and I, I, you know, I ended up going to Boston College. I got a merit scholarship to go there and I was going to study poli sci and like go into politics. Like, what was I thinking? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about using your energy the wrong way. <laughs> right, seriously. And, and I kind of, but I learned my lesson really quick about halfway through my freshman year poli sci class. I got, and it was very, this was the 90s. It was very conservative. It was a conservative campus. It was a conservative time. And I got like basically bullied out of the class. I la I can laugh about it now, but like sure. at the time, it was hard because, you know, I was the token bleeding heart liberal in the class. And so, you know, oh, you just want to save everybody. Oh, you just want to give out welfare. Mm -hmm. to and I'm like, um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, right. and then I and then I like shifted gears into filmmaking because I was like, well, maybe I can change the world via art instead. Maybe that can be my my method to, to you know, my madness. Nice. And that's how I ended up in Los Angeles. And. You know, I, I worked for a little bit in film, but I got very quickly, I mean, I hate to say this, but I got very quickly turned off by it all because, you know, again, it was the 90s. So it was very much the old boys club. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then so I kind of like drifted out of that and I found myself like rediscovering Salem Mass. Cause I used to go there when I was a kid and I didn't really think much about it. I'd just be like, oh, this is spooky and cool. You know, and and I started to like remember like my mediumship stuff. So I would say my secret to the craft is remembering who I was, because, you know, for so long, I forgot myself. I followed the rat race. I just wanted to be like rich and famous, like, oh, this is what I'm going to do, you know. And then I had this sort of like reawakening of like, that's that's not what it's about. That is that's not the goal. The goal mm -hmm. here is improving myself. So I used witchcraft, not just to cast spells to like, you know, make someone like me or get money, but to like right. burden my, you know, my own baggage and to like do, you know, I know shadow work is a buzzword, but it's a real thing and it actually really works. So I would like go into these spaces and meditate and take all these classes, especially at the Green Man and just try to like 
learn as much as I could. And it was so weird because everything that I learned, I felt like, oh, I already knew this when I was a kid. Like I'm coming full mm-hmm. circle. Weird little things like, I'll show an example. My whole life, I've been obsessed with peacock feathers, you know? Mm-hmm. So whenever I see them dropped from a peacock, I, you know, I try to grab one up. And I've always kept one in my room. Oh, there goes her internet. She said it was going to happen at some point in time. Mm-hmm. If you are still able to pick up us, Melissa, you have completely frozen. So try to uh, uh, probably log out, log back in again if you still have internet. That's what she said was going in and out, correct? Yeah. yeah. Did you get my back oh, yet? Yeah, yeah you're back. That's in fact. Okay. Of course, as soon as I pick up something witchy, that's going to happen. But- of course. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, and, so and Aaron, look at Aaron. She picked up her mug. Now she's frozen. No more objects, you ladies. I know, right? Well, but I went, witchcraft. I went to the class at the Green Man, and they were talking about how you know peacock feathers can work as an evil eye and protect you. And I was like, see, I just had to remember, you know. Yeah, that's exactly it, like me, especially with peacock feathers and with, with the all sorts of other others. You and I have such parallel paths. It's nuts. I know. It's like we're twins. <laughs> I know. Like the light in the dark. No. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie, shush. Aaron, go ahead. The end of the dog. Um, I was curious for uh, Pleasant, because obviously I saw your episode on Secrets of the Craft. And you've had such an incredible career with everything you've been involved in, you know, the punk scene, you know, as dancer, author, healer, witch. Was there a point in your life that you sort of made the decision to have they always been able to sort of be tied together, if that makes sense? And in, in all these things that you do, is there a common thread that you find in each of them that yeah, kind that of is. connects everything, if that makes sense? I don't know if that's worded yes. right, but I think you know what I mean. That, that Yeah. Well, I mean, to address that first, um, so many people can't figure out how I went from punk rock to belly dancing um, all over the world, like they think that's like like insane and has nothing to do with <laughs> with each other. But the fact that I just quit a job that I had and decided I was going to Egypt to learn belly dancing in 1990, then the next thing I know, someone was giving me a ticket to Greece, giving me a ticket when they were paper tickets. And so I just like added on Cairo left my job and went but it's because I was dreaming about belly dancing and I noticed this with my band well first of all with my fanzine in the 70s with my band the screaming sirens in the 80s with belly dancing in the 90s and then in the 2000s with bell book and candle my occult um burlesque show that I put together within a week and a half and the first one sold out. We thought it was just going to be one night, but it, we just started our seventh year. Um, I wow. always have dreams about, about major things. And I didn't even connect this until after Bell Book and Candle. Like if I have a dream and it seems so real, I pursue it. And I know some people aren't at the liberty to do it, but I kind of created the liberty by doing stuff like quitting jobs and stuff, because that's how much, I heard it in my head and saw it in dreams mm-hmm. that I needed to do it. And I thought, if I don't at least try this, I will never forgive myself. And that, you know, all of them, luckily, they all worked out. I wanted a band. I saw how it looked. I put it together. Next thing you know, we're signed. We're touring all over the place. We have songs on movie soundtrack. I mean, I'm not saying everything that I touched turns to gold, but I mean, sort of, it kind of did a little bit, but, um, yeah, you know, it was the dream, the dreams to me were like a compulsion. It was like, I had to do it. If I didn't do it or at least try it, I would never have forgiven myself, but it really, it wasn't until a couple of years after bell book and candle started that I noticed that every one of those had come from a dream and they all happened like sort of, a few years apart and they all wound up like being being like either my full living or part of my living and just being very um 
you know, great, great for my soul and usually involving a ton of other people, you know, like when I write, mm -hmm. people can read it. When I perform, people can see it or I can hire them to be with me, you know. Um, I'm I feel very blessed in that way, but also sometimes I think that people don't follow their dreams as much, you know, and I understand that, like, if you've got, like, a mortgage or children or something you can't you can't do what i did and just quit a job and like run off to egypt right. or just you know something like that um but you if if you have dreams don't think they're they're not achievable because they really are and it depends on how you go about achieving them and sometimes it'll happen very slowly but it will come true other times you do something rash and crazy, like take a gamble, like like I've done on several occasions, but it just, you know, don't don't be afraid of going after your dreams and your dreams come not just from the subconscious, but I feel like from the collective and also from past mm -hmm. lives. And so, you know, like here's a good example of a past life thing that I didn't even think of this until I was already in Egypt the first time. Why? in the name of anything holy or unholy. When I was four years old um, with my father and mother at the dinner table, my father was a non-practicing Mennonite. My mother was a non-practicing Jew. Why at the age of four was I insisting on praying to Allah before I ate? Like, seriously, what the fuck? You know, I mean, that, my mother... My mother said, where is this coming from? But I, I was like four. I didn't know where it was. I didn't even know what she was talking about. But and then that the second I got off the plane um, in Cairo, where you had to, in those days, you had to walk across the tarmac. And also you couldn't get an outside line to a different country. You'd have to wait in some hotel lobby for four or five hours until they had a line that was available. Um, you know, there was no email then. There was no internet. So right. I, I, made a hotel reservation by writing a letter in very simple English and sending it to Egypt. <laughs> um, but, but so this, but the second I got off the plane, the minute my foot touched the ground, I burst into tears. And I, I mean, even then I just thought this is past life. This is a past life thing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until after that, that I remembered that the whole insane Allah thing that was going on when I was a toddler. <laughs> But that's so fascinating. I mean, you and, and I know, Melissa, you've done, you talk about the different kinds of magic you studied throughout your, you know, your journey. And I know you had said that the Egyptian magic was the strongest one that you had ever worked with. So I'm curious, you, I, I, I love Egypt as well. I'm sure there's some sort of a past life thing there for me, but I, I do feel like there's so much energy in that area of the world because they're, you know, I mean, pyramids i mean let's be honest they look like giant crystal generators but yeah, let me let me tell you something about the pyramids yeah <laughs> this is, this i want to hear just, your thoughts on egyptian stuff let's okay. do it okay well i i would often stay at the at the mina house hotel the obore mina house which is like really cool it's like it's like you could walk to the pyramids from there practically if it wasn't like 120 degrees out you know um right but but this is this is just this was like one of the times that I was in Egypt later later on than like when I first started going. Um, it's a very swanky, beautiful hotel. So there's always a newspaper on your doormat, of, you know, right outside your room. And um, one day I woke it up, and I still have this somewhere, the front page of the newspaper, because this was this was on the front page of the legitimate newspaper in Cairo. <laughs> it said. Giza residents are getting annoyed by the amount of ghosts around the pyramid. That was the headline. I've <laughs> <laughs> never heard that before. Okay. I know. But I mean, there, if you if you ask anybody like where did the pyramids come from? Everybody but like, you know, an Egyptologist that would have studied in London or something years ago will just look at you like you're completely stupid and say, it was giant, giant to build them, you know, like it wasn't like a bunch of slaves. I mean, like, I guess right. they were like the Anunnaki or something. But, but yeah, I mean, the, the one time also a lady in Egypt told me uh, she was she was our Egyptologist and she was amazing. And then um, we were we 
to her house was literally across the street from the pyramids at Giza. There was like her house, a very narrow, like sort of dirt road, then the horse and camel stables. And then there was the, the Sphinx like right there. Right. Wow. But when she found out I lived in Hollywood, she was like, Oh, you do not know what, what means this to me. You live in Hollywood. And I was like, you live right here. Like, look at this. And she's like, but this is nothing. And I was like, well, you know, I think Hollywood is nothing else. <laughs> Let's get prayed. <laughs> but it's true. This, that, that ancient Egyptian magic is, you know, is super strong. And, you know, when I was dabbling with that stuff, I didn't know anything. You know what I mean? I was, I was like, I was a te uh, late teenager, early twenties. You know, we didn't have the internet like we do now. We didn't have access to information like we do now. So oh, yeah. I would go to, you know, Boston and Salem and all these different places and check out the bookstores. And I would find these weird little indie press book of shadows that you can't, you know, you can't find any of this stuff anymore. It just doesn't, it doesn't Sorry. exist. Everything is, you know, a big giant packaged, you know, complete book of whatever, you know, right. but you can find these little one-off books and there would be these, all these weird spells in there and, and symbols and hieroglyphics. And I felt so drawn to it. And I felt like, you know, like it, it just felt like it vibrated off the page to me. Like the, like the, the power was palpable, you know, uh -huh. and then I got a book that had spells in it that had gone to the old scrolls and it was technically a scholarly book. It wasn't supposed to be like a spell book. So in order to get a spell from it, you really had to read the whole thing because nothing was just like, like step one, do this, step two. Right. Every, everything was sort of jumbled. So I would read the whole thing and then I would go back and like, notate pages and highlight stuff and be like, okay, so page 22, this line is connected to page 52 on this line. And that's the next step in the spell. And so I would like cobble together these spells. And I only ever did two, honestly, because, mm -hmm. uh, namely because I was a little like, you know, I need to read it all first and get all the information and that took a lot of time and then i had to go and find all the ingredients which also took a lot of time because it wasn't easy to find that type of stuff then sure. and then when i did the spells they were so incredibly intense that i was like oh, i'm never doing that again and like fast, right? <laughs> it's really fast. Okay. yeah they're fast they're powerful they're intense and and you know the the outcomes were not exactly like, I mean, they did precisely what the spell was asked to do. But one lesson that I learned very much the hard way was be extremely clear when you ask what you want. Because if you just say something like, you know, I want to be bound to this lover for all eternity. And you're thinking, oh, I just want them to love me. I want to be in a couple relationship. And then the next thing you know, you're pregnant. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, well, great. right, right. That wasn't what I was asking for. I, I didn't want that. Oops. And, and, and you know, like, like I always a really um, good point. I always offer options for what I want. Like when I'm thinking of a spell, like, like, if, like you never want to bind someone to you because then it, whether you get pregnant or not, what you won't be able to get rid of them. You know, yes. you're like the worst like right. etheric stalker you've ever had in your life. Yes. Um, so if you're doing a love spell, do not bind them to you. But I don't um, do a love spell. <laughs> and you can, right. you, can, you can do it for someone, but then you can say, like, um, I you know, I want this to work on like fill in the blank, like the name of your lover, or somebody better. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or I want to do the spell on our relationship between us. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, you know, I want to, you know, strengthen the bond or like, you know, have better communication or, you know, something like that. That way the spell isn't on another person. Instead, it's just on the core the energy surrounding. You. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very much sounding like the genie in the bottle scenario. You got to be careful of those three wishes. That's totally true. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you guys this book. This was my first introduction to magic in the '70s. Wow! Oh, look no. at that. So this is um. This uh, is I'm sorry, Pleasant. The entire screen went blank. 
<laughs> I'm, just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're right. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up that evil book. Right. <laughs> this is um, but this is not the this is not the first this is this is not the actual first book. I had um a wonderful witch named Wendy heard me on a podcast talking about this. This is someone I didn't even know and she sent it to me. Ooh. Oh wow. Um, that, Okay, but like when I opened it up, it opened up to my favorite drawing in the whole book from when I was little, and I started crying. And Aww. the way that that book is written, and you can, you can still get it, like you know, for not a lot of money on eBay or you know wherever wherever you find your find used goods. Maybe at Wendy, Wendy's watching right now. <laughs> she is? Wendy, yes. are you on now? Oh my god! She just wrote, "I am here." <laughs> no, I love you. I wrote it down. I'm gonna look for a copy. Well, then you know you get this. Also brings up we're starting to get a little bit into the intention discussion of things. I mean, yeah, so much of what we do or everything we do revolves around intention. But I think in the work you guys do, there's an added level to that to the point you were just discussing because you know it's one thing where like my intention is to you know learn as much I can as I can about my spiritual ability or whatever that looks like. But it seems like with when you're dealing with when you're getting into more of the craft end of things, you have to take that up an extra level for the clarity sake. And I would never have thought of that. So for you guys, how much is I mean, how much do you play into intention when you're working with clients? Like how much are you trying to teach them about the importance of that when you're working with sessions or, you know, things like that? Or teaching, teaching someone. Yes. It's, it's hugely important. I think it's very, very important to let people know that the, that you know your intentions you have to keep them in mind all the time and here's another here's a mm -hmm. tip for everyone many of you probably already know this already when you're when you're setting intentions you can write it down all the time you can say it all the time i do both of those and focus on it but don't say i want to say it in the present tense Yes, like, yes. Like I am rich and famous and living at the base of the pyramids or I am, <laughs> yes. you know, like, like just whatever that is. And it has to be really real for you. It's yes. very real for you. And yeah. Like I, feel it in your body, like set the intention, but then also like, how does your body feel when you, you're in that mode? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Visualize yeah. it. And, and it's because if you say things like I want something, you're going to be stuck in a state of longing for all eternity. You know, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So it's like it's all of the things. And like, it's funny because when I when I do spells for clients, I am I am so by the book with the way that I do spells for others where, I, you know, I, I set sacred space. I go, you know, I go into into that space. I talk to my guides. I talk to their guides. I make sure that, you know do their guides even want me to do the spell? You know what I mean? Like, is this a good spell for this person? And if it's not, then I'm going to have to make a phone call, you know? Right. And, and then I sit and I, I do exactly what you said, Pleasant. Like I sit and I will write out everything that I discussed with the client. Like, what do they hope to achieve? And I change everything into that positive thing where it's like, you know, I, you know, I am working at such and such job and this is my salary and, you know, it's a, a stable, healthy environment and I'm, I do very well there, that kind of a thing, you know, like yeah. I make sure that it's, it's all stated. And then I take that affirmative statement and I break it down into a sigil. And I just, I love working with sigils. They just, I got my house from a sigil. Like they just work really, really well. And and then I'll take the sigil and I'll like, you know, carve it into the candle. And when I dress the candle, like I'll, you know, when I put the oils on it and I put, you know, herbs or whatever else I'm working with, you know, it may be a charm bag, it might be a jar spell, whatever it is. I very purposefully name exactly what every ingredient is, what their job is in the spell. I speak it out loud. So I'll, you know, I'll be like, okay, this rosemary I'm using is to help this person's memory because they're going to go take a big test. Or, you know, I'm, I'm using this lavender because this person needs to chill the freak yeah. out. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll name it because you know, same with being clear with your intention. All of our herbs and ingredients and tools, everything has multiple functions. So I don't want to leave it up to chance what function 
you know, the basil is going to be in this particular spell. I want to make sure that I've named it and I've told it its little job. What it needs to do. Yeah. Like, exactly. like rosemary, you don't, you don't want rosemary to protect you and block you from getting something you want, like how it would with negative energy. You want, exactly. it. You want it to all work for you. And then so many people will say things like, you know, well, all magic is is intention or all a spell is is intention. You don't really need to do all those other things. And it's true that when you, after you've practiced quite a bit, you don't, you know, and sometimes some people, and this has happened to me, and I'm sure Pleasant, this has happened to you as well. There have been times and when I was younger in the past, when I've just thought like, like, I really want this. So I'm just going to be like, I have it. And I didn't even do a spell and I would just get it. I mean, that's ha yeah, yeah, it happens. Yeah. But, but know, like, what I also think is really important too, what you said about saying out loud. Um, with the herbs, but I, I think speaking it out loud, especially if it's something that you want a lot and you just sort of blurt it out loud, I'll, I'll tell you this little anecdote and try to make it short. So I'd been trying to get on coast to coast AM for years, like emailing the site. Melissa knows this because I asked her how she got on it. Um, but so I was listening to coast to coast one night and it was like two in the morning. It was already starting for the second time. And I, I got so mad. I stood up in my chair. I yelled and I, I, I scared my cats. I was like just yelling into nothing in my kitchen at 2.30 in the morning. Why am I not on the show? Why am I not on your show? I would be the perfect guest. You should put me on the show. And then I sat down and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> then the next morning I was doing a reading for the green man and a message came in and luckily I was towards the end of it, but it was, it was from the producer of coast to coast. And I was like, what, what? And so as soon as I got um, out of the reading, she left, I could have emailed her back, but she left the number. So I called her and then she was just like, I'm so glad you called me because we, we had talked like, 10 years ago and she was going through old emails and found my email and there was like some note on it that she thought I was like would be a good guest so she emailed me but this wouldn't I, I literally feel like it wouldn't have happened if I would have not stood up and yelled it like put me on the show you know yeah you put it out Do you there think that, you know? I think even I think there's also times when we're subconsciously manifesting things too I mean yes. I know there yes. was at one All the point time. last year where I was, I had gotten back from my first Halloween trip at the Conjuring House. And I just said to my husband, I'm like, I just have this really weird feeling that, or I, and I'd really like to end up doing admin work there almost a year to the day. Oh, yeah. That job. But it was more like a wish. Like I didn't, I wasn't trying to set the intention. Like it was just kind of like, oh, this is really fun. This would be a neat place to work. I love admin work. This would be great. And then, but it was never a conscious thing. And then a year later, I'm like, oh shit, that is a thing that I thought. Of. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I think when you notice, we do like that, that all the time. The, time. But you know, the, thing, the thing about the subconscious yeah. is you have to be so careful with it. You have to be so mindful because you can also accidentally manifest really negative things in the subconscious. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So true. You have those like negative thought loops of like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I can't make any money or I can't meet anybody. Yep or blah, blah, blah. If, as, if you're replaying that in your subconscious, then you're going to manifest that in the real world. And then that yeah. it just reinforces it. You, you never, once you start having like a, a thought like that, or those thought loops, like Melissa said, because that's exactly what they are. You have yeah. to just immediately go somewhere, even if it's like a lavatory in an office building and just say out loud in the present tense, what you just blot it out. Like, let, yes. me, let me ask you something because uh, I'm delving into something very personal right now. And there's a reason why is I'm curious as to how this went about other than from the medical. Uh, two weeks ago, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Wow. Uh, wow. You know, I just turned 61 this month. And I went to my annual and they did the blood work and it came back with that and high blood pressure and an A1C of 11.3. Um, I mean, the numbers were horrific. I never felt bad. I'm not, as I stand up, overweight. Mm -hmm. By no means. Yep. Okay. <laughs> but 
But apparently, a lot of this is hereditary. Now, yeah. I took it seriously, but here's the problem. It became a nocebo in my head because yeah. they said you could have a stroke at any moment. You could have, uh, you know, something really happened to you affecting your eyes, affecting your kidneys, affect all these different problems from it. So for the first time in 61 years, I'm on medication, blood pressure medication, mm -hmm. diabetes medication. Never before. I was at 400 plus on my blood sugar count. I don't know if you guys have any friends or anybody that you know that's diabetic. That's ridiculously high. Mm -hmm. The average is 80 to 120. Mm -hmm. In this week, I started off at 379. Then I went to 335. Then I went to 225. Then 215. Today's was 143. Wow. wow. And I'm looking at that. Of course, I changed my diet. No more pasta. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't have any more of my spaghetti. Oh, but mm -hmm. but it's and it's and that that'll play on your brain too. But, yeah. mm -hmm. but I did everything correctly that I could. I don't feel any different other than now the nocebo. The, the negative. Effect. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That I yeah. never had before. I should and give I'm you some right now. I'm yeah. walking. Around. I mean, I'm walking around the house, thinking of the doctor, going, "You mf'er, what have you done to me now?" And all I could picture, I'm feeling better already, but all I could picture <laughs> was all those people. Do you guys have Whole Foods on the West Coast? Yes, yes. Whole all paycheck. Picture, whole sorry. paycheck. <laughs> every time in there going to Whole Foods, and everybody in there looks sickly. Yes, they do. Because they're all stressed about their health or, or about what they're paying for like you know so well, that price too but <laughs> right <laughs> the job that they have to have just so they can pay for whole food <laughs> bingo well, the question of that goes right into what you all were talking about that you know but this is not as Aaron was saying something negative that I'm doing to myself it was an outside source yeah that brought that negative into my life. But it can it can seep in there and that can play up in so many different ways. Like I, I, I knew someone who was very close to me and I don't wanna name any names just for privacy sake, but she was diagnosed with cancer and everybody around her said to her, you know, have, you know, think positive thoughts and, you know, you can heal yourself and whatever. And she told me in confidence, she said, she said, you know, I've I've lived a really good life. And she's like, I'm I'm afraid to take their advice and to think about my body and my health because she said, I think I'm gonna speed it up instead of get rid of it. Because she was like, I don't, I'm okay with it. She was, she had she and instantly made peace with what was going on with her. And mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's it, that mind over matter thing. It can it can work in so many different ways, you know, and it it all depends on what your you know what's going on inside of you. It, anything can come from the outside and affect you, but it's how you react to it that you have control yep. over. You yeah, know? it's it's hard though because these are professionals, and uh, you know, I was set up with a nutritionist, and all she did. She told me at 172 pounds, 5'9", that I am morbidly obese. What? Morbidly obese. Mm. And I, well, I just, it's about 168 is where I should be at. Hmm. I feel like, and I think anybody can probably agree at this point, we very much live in a society where we are giving our the power of our bodies away from a very early age. We learn from that the only thing that can be that can fix an illness or whatever it is as a doctor and medication. We've that goes back generation after generation after generation after generation. So our bodies, by product of that society, have forgotten that they already know that they can heal themselves. So I, I know for myself personally, a lot of it is like switching that mindset. Like you get negative information. Like Melissa said, you get that information, but you get to decide how you do interpret that, what you decide to do with it energetically. Because with the universe, we know you can only get back what you give out. And right. I know, for, like, I've always looked at my role as a healer, and I don't, I don't love that word because it's not my energy I'm using, right? It's some, I'm just kind of the battery, for lack of a better phrase. But I do firmly believe that an energy healer, their goal is to help a, 
person understand kind of like a kickstart back to the body. Like, oh, I already know how to do this, starting to give other tools. And I know I'm not a person that says it has to be this or that. I often get, oh, well, should I stop therapy because I'm doing energy work? No, 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 no. Stay in therapy, stay on your meds. This should be in addition to, not in place of. But I think once people start understanding that they have more power with over their own bodies than just what the doctor says, you've already started shifting the energetic frequency coming into your system just by realizing that that power is actually your own. Yes, right. exactly. Right. That's a I lot of it. mundane things you can do too, George. You know, like um, you can really, you can, depending on what your system like adjust to or allows you can eat lots of smaller little meals to keep to keep fuel in you um you said you miss spaghetti you can get there's all sorts of spaghetti that you can get made out of yeah i got chickpea chick, chick, yeah chickpea pasta i got that i went completely gluten and sugar free for this Dang. last week wow. which is wow. i think why it drops so rapidly but now sure. i have to be careful not to bottom out Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to be careful of that balance. Yep. You yeah. know. Yep. Stress, 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 stress. Well, you've also had a lot head. of stress, George, and these ladies will agree any stress that is not released in some sort of manner, whether it's a cleansing or, it's, or whatever, an intentional release of the energy, it stays Tough. there. Yeah. And then you get sick. Yep. Yeah. That's that stuck right? energy. I mean, you flow it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, even, and even won't, just, won't I don't know what it's. The weather is like well, there for you, but go for like a really like aggressive walk. Every day I have to walk my dad's uh, six-year-old rescue Maltese mix and the, the dog does not walk with me. It pulls me. Wow. It's, it's maybe 20 pounds, but that tank, four-legged tank, takes me for a drag for about 40 minutes <laughs> every single day. And I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for that exercise. I really am. And that's a time that clears my head also. But it creeps back in that the doctor said what they said to me and I refer back to it again. I feel like there's, there's two things that I would suggest. One thing that just popped into my head was acupuncture or acupressure because the, both of those um, systems, you know, they're Eastern systems and they work really, really well to get your energy flowing properly. Yeah, I, acupuncture is amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've, I, I, you know, I was having a, a, I have IBS and I was having, I went through like a period of time where it took me hours to get out of bed every morning because my stomach was in so much constant pain. And it was acupressure that, an acupuncture that got that energy flowing and like just doing the acupuncture, I lost 10 pounds. I didn't even change how I ate. Wow. I, just, I just lost weird extra weight that was stuck on me, you know? Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I would say, George, have you ever looked into hypnotherapy? Cause hypnotherapy is something where when you get a negative thought loop stuck in your head and you, for whatever reason, you can't get it rid of it. I find, and this happened to me as well. I had some, I had a bunch of stuff I wanted to do, but I couldn't like, I don't know. It's like, I just couldn't get the impetus to do the thing. <laughs> and so I went to uh, a couple, I went to like three different hypnotherapists and one, one, one of them is my good friend, Jackie, who's been on the show, but they all helped me to remove those those blocks so that I could just focus on what I wanted to do without the negative talk in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's a possibility, but I'm not sure so much here uh, on the east coast of Florida. I don't think, Aaron, anywhere that you would know, you're 30 minutes. Oh north yeah, we got hot no hypnotherapist down here and acupuncturists. Yep, we got both. Oh, <clears throat> not, not not. We'll here have to talk coast. offline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. get that going. Saint yeah, Augustine, it, we got a little everything. Yeah. Saint Augustine is great. They have everything, especially yeah. a lot of ghosts. <laughs> yeah. A lot of ghosts. Fantastic no place. doubt about yeah. that. But yeah. it's it's one of those yeah. things that again just plays on my mind for it, and I, I appreciate you guys, you know, kind of bringing me out of that funk a little bit because it's been playing on me and weighing on me. It really has. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's 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 difficult, which again kind of speaks to the impact of what you all do. Could absolutely, if used for dark purposes, can be strongly effective. Yes, it um, can. This yeah. is true. <laughs> Hashtag hex the patriarchy. No. Did I <laughs> okay, t-shirt. Let's get a t-shirt with that. I'm in. 
bumper stickers, <laughs> beanies, whatever you want to make them in. Don't forget you do your energy for Ken also as he's uh, yes, convalescing exactly. at home, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's funny. We were all like doing. We were doing our woo. <laughs> our woo. Magic that's hands. That's what I do. I always I say to people I don't want to woo. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me put this up there while you guys Lots are talking. Aaron, I'll I'll uh, turn it back over to you, but I want to put this up there while you guys are talking because it's uh it's my favorite part of this episode. So oh okay. Oh yeah. Right there. <laughs> this this is so fun. explain this if you could what you're doing right here for us. Pleasant. Pleasant. I was I was just feeling her and clearing her out and making her calmer and just feeling like she was having well being. She had bottom back problems. You've detected that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was some other kind of energy around her too that you released. Now you kind of uh, like going back to um, Green Mile, um, where you suck it in and then push it out. Correct. Yes. Yeah, sometimes I push it in and out. Yeah. Like a, like I get more. It's kind of like kneading dough, but with energy, mm -hmm. and I, I accumulate yeah. more and more. Even at the end of this video, you wind up coughing. Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> I have to tell new clients that sometimes I will um I will cough or I'll sneeze or I'll feel like you know it sounds like I'm vomiting because you are you are the real life John Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasant coffee. C O U G H. Oh. Aaron, go ahead, Laura. <laughs> Well, I was I was been watching this again. I think it's interesting too because you're talking about the different tingles. I watched like an episode of Ancient Aliens completely randomly because it's not something I usually catch. But they were actually doing a scientific experiment with an energy healer, a Reiki master, to test electrodes and the whole thing to see if when you're doing energy work, if an energy practitioner creates their own electromagnetic field when they do work, and they do. Yeah. So you know. Tingly, I get a lot. You know, you get the hot hands. I don't know about you guys. Sometimes the hands get so hot, you almost need to put them in water, you know. Um, it's just fascinating, to, you know, because we all do things similarly, but also very differently. But the effects are often the same. It's just a different way of doing yeah. things, which I just find right. so fascinating. There was a I, I, can, yeah. I, can also tell, I can also tell um, when someone's got an acute physical and like mm -hmm. I get near one if they've got an acute um physical injury, my hands go freezing cold and it's crazy because all the fingers in the palm are cold. If you go right there, it's warm and it feels like I'm a human, but this feels like like Dracula just grabbed you. Wow. I mean I mean the people don't feel it, but they go freezing cold and like so and that's even just from scanning them. So that's you know, I, I see, I'll either see the dots or it goes freezing cold and then I get the dots like where something is happening. I love that they did an experiment though on Ancient Aliens. And just as a mm -hmm. side note, I freaking love that show. So if you I ever want to- I just don't usually I want, I, want to, I want to be an experiment subject. <laughs> it's so great. And if you ever want to do an episode and talk about aliens, like I'm your girl. I have had yes. some weird, weird experiences with okay, aliens. Okay. So now that you're talking about aliens, I might as well just tell you that a, a lot of what I really think where this energy healing came from, I thought it forever pre-internet. Um, in 1965, there was um, a UFO or a fireball spotted over Niagara Falls in upstate New York in my house, you know, which was, it was like, there wasn't even a town near it. The nearest town was Brewster, and that was like 30 miles away, out in the sticks, pitch dark. I um, I asked my mom if I could watch Lassie, and she told me I could if I put on my pajamas. So I raced upstairs, and as I was on the floor pulling on my footy pajamas, my whole bedroom went yellow, like bright yellow. And I stood up, and I hopped over to the, to the window, and um, there was this big thing that I thought looked like a sun and it had orange and green tails coming off it, going over oh, cool. our going over our pond and you could see the whole tree line illuminated. And um, I went running downstairs yelling, mommy, mommy, I wasn't scared, I was excited, you know? And she was she was at the, the living room window downstairs holding the landline to her, to, you know, to one air and she had a, 
her hand over her heart. And she she told the the sheriff that what she had seen, and since there was it was some a community of so many small towns, the sheriffs naturally thought that since they knew that my father worked in New York City a lot and she had a couple of toddlers at home, they thought she was drinking and they sort of dismissed her. They oh, called her back two and a half hours later to apologize because over 200 people had called in with the same thing. Um, and the second she hung up the phone from that, all the electricity in our house went off. And then we learned the next day that all the electricity from Niagara Falls to the middle of Maryland, um, just the whole Eastern seaboard just went poof. At one at one time, and they and everyone thinks that's from the um from the power station at Niagara Falls. But um, wow, swear to God, like all my childhood and up to my twenties, like when I was already having the energy healing, I thought it came from seeing that. That's so cool, and it's that's so weird because so cool. that's another weird connection that we have. Because I have seen UFOs since I was mm -hmm. since I was a little kid, my entire life, and we would. Every summer we would go to North Truro, which if you know Massachusetts, yeah, Truro in Nova Scotia. Well, this is this is in um, Massachusetts. So, like, if you know Massachusetts, how oh, it has yeah. an arm that comes out like this, and yeah. the very the tip is uh, Provincetown, and then this is like little area right here. Before there is North Truro, and we would stay in these cottages that were literally on the beach. They were called Days Cottages. Now they're condos, sadly, but like, and they're really expensive for t anyway, but. <laughs> <laughs> but then we would stay in these little cottages and, you know, so I like, and I all, I've had chronic insomnia my entire life. It's just a, thing, you know, <laughs> a night owl. And so I would like go outside and I would lie down on the beach and everyone would be asleep and I would stare up at the stars and out there, especially you see everything. You can see everything. You can see the pure Milky way, like not a snake. It looks like Disney made it. Totally. It right? does look you know, and it's like, and so I would, and I would constantly see these lights. Now, my whole life, when I were, I would tell people about these lights, they would be like, oh, it's an airplane or, oh, it's a satellite or, oh, it's this. And I'm like, no, man, yeah. like it was, it didn't move linearly across the sky, like a, like a, you know, a satellite or a plane would, it would like pop into existence, move mm -hmm. like this go over here and pop out of existence and then move back over here and then move over here and then hover. Yeah. You know, it would move in all these different weird ways. And I would see them constantly to the point where there was one night we were staying in a different, uh, it wasn't the day's cottages. I forget. It was, I think it was a hostel or something like that. It was a different situ situation. And I got, <laughs> I got locked out. I had stayed out too late and, the, and it had like, a time limit of when you could get back in. So I was like, ah, crap. So I was like, well, I guess I'm sleeping on the beach tonight. <laughs> so I just, you know, I had, and I had a blanket with me because I was out at the beach all day. So I set up my little spot at the beach and it's like, I'll just lie here and stare at the stars and let myself drift off. And I'll wake up when the fishermen come out and do their thing at, at the crack of dawn, you know? And I completely had like a, like a blank of time. Like I was sitting there. I never fell asleep. I was just in the night staring at the sky and sitting upright. And then the next thing I knew I was in the same spot and it was daytime and there were the fishermen, but I had never fallen asleep. I never lay yeah. down to sleep. And so, and I've had other like weird missing time moments like that. And I never, ever, ever, ever have said I've been abducted. I would never, I've never occurred to me to ever say something like that. And then I was on Kate, or I'm sorry, Kat Hobson's show. Mm -hmm. And I was telling her about my experiences and she was like, girl, <laughs> Girl. <laughs> and then I told her about like how I've also more so recently than when I was younger, but I've gotten these sort of telepathic messages from oh, yeah. some kind of entities mm -hmm. and they don't come in like spirit guides or deities or, or fairies or any other spirits that I usually work with in mediumship. They come in vastly differently. And, you know, and I was just telling a friend about this the other day where it's like when these when these voices come in, it's almost like how like old fashioned long distance telephone. You remember like when you would have, like back oh, yeah. in the day, you'd call you your calls and, it'd be yeah, like, and you would get this like, <laughs> yeah, I just like, right. It would come through like that. And the first time that I remember this, ex this experience happening, I was meditating. I was talking to my guides. 
And all of a sudden I got that, like, I got this like sound and I, my eyes popped open and I look around and I'm like, did the cats turn on like something or is the TV on? And everything is off. I looked outside, nothing was happening. I was like, okay, it was my imagination. I sit back down again, go back into meditation. I hear this noise again. And then I hear these voices talking to each other. And one of them is like, can she hear us? Is she hearing us? Is she on the right frequency? Yes, I think she is. I do think she's hearing us. Wow. And I'm sitting here like, like, okay, I've got to, let's see. Uh, do I know any therapists? Because I need to talk to somebody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like totally telling me like um, that I, they were going to give me some kind of a message. And I've since then gotten other things. But I'm like, okay, are these aliens? Like, what is this? And then Kat's like, well, yeah, don't you know? Aliens talk to everyone they talk to. It's telepathically. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. honey, we need to talk some more. <laughs> when you were talking right. about the uh, ship up in the air, I think it was last week or the week before, two weeks ago, we had Mark D'Antonio on. I would highly recommend you go back and watch that interview. Mark D'Antonio okay. was talking about the fact that most of these ships do not travel linear. They travel dimensionally. Yeah. That's why it's it, it, in and out. out. Yeah. 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 Like they skip in and out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, 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 over my whole body. Oh, my God. Okay. Yes. So get a chance to watch that. We just made a two-hour show seem like twenty minutes. It's two oh hours already. It's really it's, almost. Yeah. Wish we got one minute to uh, <laughs> uh, to end the show. Uh, anything, website or event or contact or upcoming uh, appearances that you guys would like to talk yes. about? And you're both, doing it. You're both ready books, with the books. Please. Okay, pleasant <laughs> thirty seconds and go. Pleasantgaming.com. My book is called Rock and Roll Witch. There's a lot of stories like I told um, today on it. And also you can get tarot readings from my website and all sorts of other woo-woo stuff. And I'm working on a book um, about actual craft now, not just the memoir of crazy things. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. And what do we have here? So this is my book. This is actually a fake cover because because I don't, they haven't sent me a physical book yet. <laughs> I made her do that. <laughs> so you can find this book, um, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, you know, anywhere that they sell books. It's being distributed by Simon and Schuster, and it's all about identifying and interpreting messages from the afterlife. And and I also talked to you about how to connect with spirit and everything like that. You can pre-order it now. It doesn't come out until May seventh, I think, but you can pre-order it now. I'm going to do a signing on May 11th at the Green Marin store. And I'm also going to teach a spirit communication class with that then. <laughs> oh, fantastic. We are completely out of time. Actually, over. Thank you, Bill, for keeping us just slightly over. Ladies, don't hang up yet. Please stay with us. But uh, that concludes our show tonight, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and the thumbs up. Very important. We'll see you all next week. Same time, same streaming channel. Good night.